What is up Bull Nation and welcome to today's video guys. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most requested videos that I get on the channel. Laser, can you make a dexterity build video? And now that we actually got one of the best weapons with really good dexterity guys and it actually got fixed, now it's time to make that video happen because not only do we get a really good weapon, but we're able to put this build together. So if you guys are enjoying our Elder Ring content here on the channel and want to see more builds, let us know what builds you want to see. But most importantly guys, Hit that like button, help us out with that algorithm because it does help us out a lot. But let's talk about the build we're going to be talking about. The main thing we're going to be talking about right now, guys, of course, the one that everybody was talking about is the River of Blood. Now, before everybody started talking about it, guys, I was the one that was actually pushing for this weapon before it even, even got updated. So if you really want to know who started the Rivers of Blood trend, you know where to find me. There you go, guys. All right, anyway, so let's talk about the Rivers of Blood. So... What exactly is really good about the Rivers of Blood? Well, there's a couple things that make this weapon very good. Number one is, of course, its passive effect that it causes blood buildup. Now, it does 72 damage. Now, I will have a video later on today explaining what is the best weapon for blood buildup. So you're definitely going to want to make sure you check out that video because we're going to explain why you should probably change that weapon from this one. But that's a different video. We're talking right now about the Rivers of Blood. So you want to get this to plus 10 because this gives you the biggest boost of 72. If yours is not plus 10, you will not have that boost. So you want to make sure you keep that in mind. In addition to that, guys, you want to make sure you keep a couple things into perspective here. That this weapon also scales off fire. So if you have any talisman or anything that enhances that fire effect, it will also scale with this weapon. That's something a lot of people don't mention and overlook. So if you have any talisman that scales the fire attack, it will also scale the weapon damage as well. Now, it does come with FP consumption. So anytime you use the super heavy attack, the L LT, the left trigger, that is going to consume some FP. So we're going to have to find a way to actually get that back. Now, if you guys want to find out where to get this weapon, I have a video showing you guys exactly how to get it. So make sure you check out that video. I don't want to extend this video too long. So that's why I'm not showing it here. Now, in addition to that, guys, we're also running the Dragon Com Communion Seal which is going to help us to do even more damage. And I'm going to go a little bit in depth here. But basically what this does, guys, it boosts Dragon Communion Incantations. But the majority of the reason we want to use this one is because it scales off Arcane. And Arcane is really important for this particular build. Not extremely important, but for the way I have my character set up, it is. Now, the must-get item, of course, guys, is going to be the White Mask. Now, the reason why the White Mask is so important is because the White Mask slightly raises attack power when there is blood loss nearby. And since we're using the Rivers of Blood, we're going to constantly having blood loss. It's going to make this a must-get item. Now, I also have a video explaining on how to get this, so make sure you guys check that out. This is a very big requirement when this built. So, so far, big requirement, the Rivers of Blood. Big requirement is the White Mask. This one is, it depends. If you just want Arcane, you can just use any other seal. Next, we're going to be using the Shard of Alexander. This is going to greatly boost your attack power of skills. Since we are using the skill of the Rivers of Blood a lot, the Shard of Alexander is actually going to work very well. Now, I have a video on how to get this as well. We'll be linking it here on the channel as well. But if you guys don't have this one, you can actually get this one as well, which is the Warrior Yard Shard. This is if you just kill a Jard guy. If you just kill him, he'll give you this one. If you do his quest line, he will give you this one, the Shard of Alexander. Highly recommend it. It's going to boost your attack speed and power of skills. In addition to that, guys, we have the Rotten Wing Insignia. This is going to really greatly raise your attack power. Uh, so this is really, really good. And I highly recommend this. You can actually get this off the Millicent Quest, which I'll link in the video. Remember, the Millicent Quest, now, you're, if you want to make sure you get this Insignia, you got to make sure you help her out. That is the only way you're going to be able to get this, okay? So make sure you help her out. Now, there is a substitution for this one, which is this one, which is going to raise your attack power with successional attacks. This one raises it more because this does it greatly. And this one just raises the attack power with successful attack. So you have either or, but this is the best one because this is the one that's going to give you more damage. In addition to that, guys, we're also using the Lord's Blood Exaltation. This is going to allow us to, for blood loss in the vicinity, it's going to increase your attack power. Very powerful. I have a video showing you guys exactly where to get this and pick this up. So if you guys want to check that out as well. The next one, guys, we have the Millicent Prothesis. This is going to boost your dexterity, raise your attack power with successful hits this is important because it does two really important things for this build number one it boosts our dexterity remember this weapon scales off with dexterity the more dexterity we have the more boost we have and it's also going to raise our attack power with this as well now this is going to be a requirement in the sense that if you want to pick either this one or this one 
you're probably going to want to go with this one because you could theoretically get this one as well. Because with the Millicent Quest after it got fixed, you could only pick one or the other one. So in order to pick get the Millicent's Prothesis on the Millicent Quest, you actually have to decide to go against her and pick the, uh, that's how you get the this talisman. Now, you're probably wondering, Laser, your stats are pretty crazy. Do I have to have my stats and be that high level? No, guys, if you're level 150, all you have to worry about are two main things when it comes to building this thing is getting a high dexterity, so making your dexterity be at least 60. You want to have it at least at 60, and your strength at least at 60. You guys are fine. Anything else, you guys can spend whatever points you want. Me personally, I believe the three main ones that are here are Vigor, because that's going to determine how long you're alive. A strength, that's going to raise the ability of how hard hitting your weapon is. And Dexterity, it's also going to determine on how much blood loss you're going to be doing with the weapon and how hard it's going to hit. So that's going to be your bread and butter. Now remember, with this one here, we're going to be able to pick up 5 points. So theoretically, you could just get your Dexterity to 75 or 55 and it will get to 60 or 80 regardless. I still recommend you guys get your Dexterity to 80. It does help out quite a lot. Now, if you guys want to substitute this, you guys, you could substitute any of these with either this one, which is going to raise your fire attack, attack, but it's going to lower your damage negation. Because remember, it does scale off power. Or you could go with something that's going to restore your health. So after successful attacks, your health will be restored. You go and swap that for this one right here, or this one right there. All right, so now that you have that, guys, let's cover some stuff that's going to be important for this build as well. And that's we have to go to the side of grace. Now, these are going to be mostly uh, spells, and we're going to be covering Mixed Wondrous Physics and, of course, the Great Ruin. So for, for the Memorized Spells, guys, we're going to be running this one, which is going to allow us to raise the physical and fire affinity attack power. So that means since this weapon does scale off of fire, that's going to raise it up. The next one is going to be this one, guys, which is going to be the Golden Valve, which is going to increase your attack and defenses for self and ally. So this is really important. It does scale off faith, so you have to have 25 faith or higher. So you want to make sure you keep that in mind when you're specking. Currently right now, I don't have it set up. But if you guys are going to be doing this build, you're going to want to make sure you have your fate to 25 to get even more raw damage. But the way I have it set up, it still does a ton of damage. So this is just only to boost it a little bit further. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to want to make sure we mess around with our Wondrous Physics Mixes. This one's really important because what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to eliminate all FP consumption. So you could spam that for 10 seconds, your power attack, and not waste it. So that's really important. And this one as well. It's going to boost your fire attack, which once again, it does scales off fire, so it's going to be helping it quite a lot. Last but not least, guys, we're going to go with the Great Ruin, which is the Riker Ruin, which is going to restore your HP upon defeating enemies. This is extremely important for this build because if you just want to stack Talisman to just boost your damage, then this is going to where you're going to be getting your FP a lot from. So you want to make sure you have that. I have a video going over where exactly to pick this up. So now what we're going to do is let's put everything into context and show you guys exactly the amount of damage that it does so we got that and now we're going to apply this guy which is going to boost our damage and we're going to apply our physics as well just to make sure we do even more damage and here we go guys now it's time for us to actually hit these boys all right look look at that damage guys look at that damage so now we're going to want to make sure we take that guy before he comes and attacks us all right there we go roll to this guy real before he starts rolling I right, take these guys out. Look at it. Look at that, guys. No, no chance for this enemy. Look at that. Look at that. We're getting our HP back. We're getting our health back. And that is with the attacks. Here we go. Look at that health, guys. Look at the health. Look at the FP. It's not going down. It's just crazy good. Look at that. One, two attacks. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Look at this. We can even backstab him like this. He didn't even know what hit him. Almost 2,000 damage on that backstab. And they're all dead except for this guy right here. Let's go hit him up a little bit. All right. Right there. Look at it. Look at this. Look at this, guys. No competition whatsoever look at this guy just sleeping here Oof, 2100 damage easy peasy lemon squeezy that's how powerful this build is guys it's really awesome once you run it correctly and by far this is the best rivers of blood build i've seen other stuff on the youtube but none of them kind of explain it and break down how you could actually maximize this to its full potential and there you guys have it now last time you guys came into the video a lot of you guys asked me laser what kind of armor are you running I have a video where to get this one. It gives it a complete samurai look, even though I'm not a samurai. I am running a mage character. But look how amazing this looks. And what I love about Elden Ring is like, you're not really tied to a specific class. You can make anything mage. You can make anything, uh, you know, become anything that you want it to become as long as you have the right stats. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering and saying, Laser, oh my goodness, you're so high level. That's why you're doing so much damage, guys. It doesn't, level doesn't really matter in this game. I'm going to make a video on that. And I'm going to explain, as long as you know how to spec, 
you guys are going to be doing the same amount of damage. Just remember the main three focal points for this build. Strength, Dexterity, Vigor, and of course, you want to make sure you have that 25 in Faith so you can get even the most amount of damage for this build. And there you guys have it. That is my Rivers of Blood build. I hope you guys are enjoying the content here on the channel. If you are doing the heat for you guys, drop a comment, drop a like. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn on all your notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.